through this evening. Adele referred to my text this morning, and she referred to my text this evening. And if that's not confirmation, well, I don't know what is. But we're in Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to start reading tonight from verse number 1. And Paul writes, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love for which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to that reading of his own precious truth. It was Sunday night, the 10th of March, 1748, when a miracle of grace took place in one man's life, just a few miles from the coastline of Donegal. In fact, this miracle of grace took place in what is known as Loch Swilly. And you know, friends, this evening, it was a miracle of grace tonight that took place in this man's life. One man that was almost deemed impossible to be converted. And you know, friends, this evening, a miracle of grace in any man's life or in any woman's life, in anybody's life. Listen, it's a miracle tonight. A miracle of grace is what it is this evening. It's a miracle. And friends, tonight it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, how religious you are, how good you are, how upright you are, you need a miracle of grace tonight in your life. And as I have already said, the saving of a soul is a miracle. Man cannot save. It's a miracle tonight concerning the saving of a soul. My dear unsaved friend tonight, if you want to be in heaven and you want to escape the damnation of hell, a miracle of grace, I tell you, will have to take place in that heart of yours as it did in my heart. That man on the 10th of March, 1748, friends, through that experience, penned one of the most loveliest hymns that ever graced our hymn books. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace, my fears relieve. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed. 
No wonder Newton called it amazing grace. Because grace tonight is so amazing. For any sinner tonight to be converted, for any sinner tonight to be saved, regardless to religion, regardless to race, there will have to be a miracle of grace in your life if you're ever going to be saved. You see, friend, here's the text tonight. Verse number 8, For by grace are you saved. That's the plan tonight of getting saved. For by grace. That's the plan. And it's God's plan. Friend, for by grace are you saved. That's nothing to do with learning creeds or catechisms. You say to me, George, you say this every week. I know I do because I'll tell you that people are blind in this country because of creeds and catechisms. For by grace, that's God's plan for any soul to get saved. And then it says this, for by grace, are you saved? That's the promise of getting saved. I'll tell you, friend, grace will save tonight. For by grace are ye saved. You don't need to doubt grace tonight. For grace will save. And then you see there, friend, for by grace are ye saved. And here's the next wee bit, through faith. Now that's the path of getting saved tonight. It's the path of faith. Therefore, being justified, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through faith. My friend, it's nothing to do with feelings. It's through faith. That's what the Paul and Silas had belief on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be waiting to feel anything. Don't be waiting to experience anything. If you're under conviction of sin tonight, as you ought to be and should be, you believe in the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. For by grace, that's the plan. Are you saved? That's the promise. Through faith, that's the, that's the path. And that not of yourselves, that's the predicament of getting saved. That's the predicament for many people. Not of yourselves. You go to the upright, you go to the church, go and man, they nearly take the head of you because it's a predicament to them. If you tell them that it's not of yourselves, my dear unsaved friend tonight, listen to me, you can do nothing to save yourself. Oh, you can do nothing to save yourselves tonight. And that's a predicament to men. It's a predicament because they have their own belief. They have their own way. wonder, is it a predicament to you this evening as far as this grace is concerned? It's not of yourselves. Ah, but here's the preciousness of getting saved tonight. It is the gift of God. That's the preciousness of salvation. That's the preciousness of grace. It's the gift of God, love. It's free. It's the gift of God. It's free. It's without money. It's without price. Why? It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That's the point of getting saved. The point is tonight, it's not of works. A lot of people are trying to work their way to heaven, as Adele was showing us this evening. And they're going through rituals, and they're going through all the rigmaroles of religion, and they're trying to work their way, and they're going in pilgrimages. 
And I'm telling you, friends, tonight, there's many striving for it this evening, working their way to heaven. And there's as many Protestants on the road to hell because they're trying to work, for he work towards heaven as well as anybody. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amazing grace this evening. How sweet the sound. Why does it sound sweet tonight? Now, oh, that's the question. Why is this saving grace so amazing this evening? I'll tell you why. First and foremost, it's free. It's free. Everybody will take anything for nothing apart from salvation. They would run from here to Dublin if they could get a bargain. If they're getting it for nothing, they would run from here to Dublin. I'll tell you, there's something free and free tonight. It's salvation. Not cost you a thing. Many, many years ago, and I'm talking way back in the early 1900s, there's a young boy sitting beside his mother in one of the slums in, in London. She was lying under a heap of rags, she was, and she was dying too. And he was holding her hand and squeezing her hand. And I'll tell you, when your mother's dying, there's, there's something about a mother when she's dying. And the mother turned round to the wee lad and said, what I would give what I would give, she said, for the taste of a juicy grape just to ease this parched tongue of me. And the wee boy remembered. He knew where there was great, good grapes. He says, Mother, I know where there's grapes, and I'll go and get them for you. In the winter's night in London, the wee boy sat off. Do you know where he went? He went to Buckingham Palace because he was there on a trip and got a tour of many of those greenhouses. And he could remember in the greenhouses there was vines there, almost at breaking point with the bunches of grapes, and he arrived at the palace gates. And he said to the guard what he was there for, and the guard laughed at him. And this wee boy standing in the pouring rain, soaked to the skin, and the guard laughing at him. And he just stood there. And suddenly the carriage came in. There's a horse-drawn carriage. And in the carriage it was King Edward. And King Edward saw the wee lad standing crying and soaked to the skin, and he commanded the carriage to be stopped, and he called the wee boy over who was just dressed in rags himself. And the king asked the wee lad what he was there for. Your Majesty, he couldn't even look to the king. My mother's dying. And she's looking some grapes. And I know you have some. And the king commanded the guard that was mocking the wee lad and making fun of him to go and cut the best grapes that were on the vines. And the wee lad stood there. After a few moments, the guard came with two big bunches of grapes. And the wee lad stood there, totally dumbfounded. And he reached into his pocket and he said to the king, he says, Your Majesty, he says, I have nothing to give you. I have nothing to give you. 
And the king said, Son, you don't have to give me anything. The king's grapes are free to all who ask. Sinner friend tonight, God's grace is free to all as ask, but let me tell you how poverty you are tonight, how poor you are. You have nothing yourself to give God because the Bible teaches us. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Let me tell you, you can give nothing for you have nothing. But God's grace tonight, it's free. And that's what John Newton found. And that's why John Newton penned them words, amazing grace. It's amazing for it's free. 26th of August, 1985, I found it to be free. I came to Jesus as I was poor, wretched, blind. But I came just the way I was. And as we sung that hymn tonight, do you know what I found? <laughs> Grace is free. Grace is free. Oh, amazing grace tonight. How sweet the sound. It's free tonight. I'll tell you something else tonight. Grace is amazing not just because it's free, it's because it's forgiving. You see, every one of us tonight were born into this world of sinners. And tonight, if you're not saved and have never repented of your sin and you never came to Christ, I'll tell you, friend, tonight you're condemned before God. Ah, but here's grace tonight. Here's the message of grace. Isaiah 55 and 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. I am the unrighteous man of thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, for he will have mercy. And to our God, in spite of our sin, in spite of our wickedness, in spite of what we've done, in spite of who we are, He will abundantly pardon. Just on Wednesday, I was speaking to John Humphreys, who was down with the trailer. And he and I were talking about some bad boys who were involved in the troubles. He and I knew a number of them by name, but didn't know them personally. We certainly were told to keep their eyes peeled if, our eyes peeled if they were in the vicinity. John and I named a couple of them. And two of them were two ruthless Republican killers. And today they're saved. And today they are on fire. 
And today they are reaching others with the gospel. I say, no wonder Newton called it amazing grace. It's amazing because it's free. It's amazing because it's forgiven. Oh, yes. And this amazing grace is for anybody who will have it tonight. Isn't it sad how God wants to give men and women eternal life, but they don't want it? How God longs to forgive sinners, but they don't want it. But here's the biggest tragedy. God gave His Son to the cross, and sinners don't want Him. Do you see the cross tonight? That's amazing grace. Do you see Christ crucified? I'm telling you, that's amazing grace. Do you see him suffering? That's amazing grace. Do you see him bleeding? That's amazing grace. Do you see him bowing his head and dying? That's amazing grace. How is it amazing grace, George? Tell me, how is it amazing grace? Because he was there for you, that's why. That's why. Now, that's what I call tonight amazing grace. Died he for me who caused his pain. Now, that's amazing grace. It's amazing because it's free. It's amazing because it's forgiving. I'll tell you this, it's amazing because it's forever. It's amazing because it's forever. Listen, amazing grace wasn't just a flash in the moment experience. Amazing grace saved me. Amazing grace seals me. And I'll tell you this, amazing grace secures me. Because the Lord Jesus says, I give unto my sheep eternal life, and they shall Never perish. Grace tonight is forever. What about you tonight? What about you? It's amazing grace to see. For by grace are ye saved. Get that tonight. For by grace are ye saved. For by grace are ye saved. For by grace are ye saved. Outside of that, you're lost. Outside of that, you're doomed. Outside of that, you're for hell. But God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, Oh, no. Now, here's amazing grace. But that the world through him might be saved. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Is it, is it sweet to your heart tonight? Is it sweet for your soul tonight? It's free. 
It's forgiving. It's forever. And it's all in the person of Christ in it. Let's bow in prayer. You think tonight all of what God has done for you. That's amazing grace. You think tonight of what Christ has did for you. That's amazing grace tonight. You can either receive it or reject it. It was all for you. Now, that's what I call grace. God's riches at Christ's expense for you. And if God has been speaking, you come and see me now and get this right before God. Eternity looms over you tonight. But better still, Christ is calling. May God, by His grace, draw you to Him this evening for His name's sake. Amen. And amen. Our closing.